Okay, so this has got, um, the first two parts are not too bad, but it's got this part C that we really want to look at. I'm going to show you a way to do it in the calculator um, because the alternative is, is uh, factoring or doing the quadratic formula, which is very complicated. So we're just going to talk about how to do uh, C at the end. So pay close attention to that because the, um, I'm going to read these again. The IB exam will have to go. But anyways, it says write down an expression for SN in terms of N. Okay, I've got S1 is 4. That means that's the first term. And then the difference is negative 3. I don't know UN, so I can't do this one. Right? So I'm not able to do that problem right there. Um, so I can then take this and I can use that first formula. I can plug in what I know. So SN equals N over 2 times 2 times U1, which is 4. So 2 times 4 plus N minus 1. The common difference is negative 3. So there's my formula. I plugged in the common difference and I plugged in the first term. Okay, and now I can use that with any n value, any number of terms to spit out a sum. Remember, this is the sum formula. So it says find s of 10. All right, so find the sum of the first 10 terms. I mean, that's what that means, the sum of the first 10 terms. Okay, now, can you write all 10 out and add them? Sure. Okay, it's going to take a while, though. So S10, you plug 10 in for N. So 10 over 2 times 2 times 4. I can change it to 8 if I want. I'm just going to leave it. Plus 10 minus 1 times negative 3. I write it really carefully here and make sure that I have all the parentheses and everything in the right spot because I'm just going to put that exact thing in the calculator. All right, so um, you, I already did it because I did this video once already and I put it in uh, Part C, I did a very complicated way, and then I thought about it, and it's like, that's not the best way to do this. So I'm making a new one right now. So 2 times 4 plus 10 minus 1. That's not 10 minus 1. 10 minus 1 times negative 3. So there's the exact same thing that I have written in one note. So I hit enter, and it gives me negative 95 for my sum. Now, I actually also thought that that was wrong, so I wrote the terms out and actually added them, and it is negative 95. So I, I thought I had the formula wrong, but that's correct. All right, so then part C. So now part C says, what? how many terms can I have? So what's the smallest n? So how many terms can I have so that the sum is less than... Negative 250. So it wants to know this formula right here. How many... What's the biggest n I can put in so that the sum is not 250 or more, okay, that it's less than 250? If you try to solve this by plugging in negative 250 and then solving for n, you get a quadratic equation which involves factoring or completing the square or um, quadratic formula, which I know is everyone's least favorite thing from all of math. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do this in the calculator. Okay, and you can do this all the time for any of these questions where it asks you stuff like this. Okay, I'm going to take that formula right here, and I'm going to put it in the graph, and then I'm going to use the table to find this out. Okay, and this is not a bad thing to do, and it's way less time consuming than actually solving this by factoring it or using a quadratic formula, especially if you're not good at it. Okay. So I'm going to put this into the graph. So I'm going to hit Y equals. I'm going to clear this out and put it in and make sure it works. So I'm not going to put N and I'm going to put in X. So I'm going to put in alpha Y equals for a fraction, X over 2. So I'm place this in N, I'm going to put an X. Whoops. So X over 2. And then i got to make sure I use my parentheses. So parentheses. And then it's 2 times 4. I can make it 8 or I can just put 2 times 4. Plus X minus 1. So it says N minus 1 times negative 3, which is the common difference, and I close the parentheses. It is the exact same thing in that red box right there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to graph it, because I don't care what it looks like, it's not going to help me. I'm going to use the table. And so these x values are my n values, and then the y values are my sums. So if I had one term, the sum is 4, and then 5, and then these are the sums. So you can see that my 10th thing that I got right there, the sum is 95, okay? So how many terms can I add together until I get to more than 250? So 14 terms is 217, no big deal. 15 terms is 250, negative 255. That's too much. That means that I cannot have 15 terms. All right, so I can have 14 terms. 
So the trick here is, what are you going to write down? I want to write down n equals 14, s 14 equals negative 217. So that shows that 14 is okay. All right, but then n equals 15, uh, s 15 equals negative 255, and that's not okay. So that's how I would write the answer to that question, and that's good enough. You could also choose to write the table down. Uh, I wouldn't write it like this. I mean, if you wrote x, y, whatever, I would write n and then s sub n. And then I would show 13, 14, 15 from my table. This is negative 217. This is negative 255. And then that other one is negative 182. Okay, and that's going to show enough. And then I would say 14 terms. All right, that is the absolute easiest way to do it. It shows that you understand what you're talking about. Um, and it's something that's very easy for you guys to actually do rather than try to have to go through and do a whole bunch of factors.